I've never seen a spear like this before. That new day that comes is not to be to get you into worry and anxiety. Look at what I see and I've never seen. Look at what I observe. I've never observed. It is not to get you into worry and anxiety. It's to say, do I have something within me today that can deal with this challenge I've never seen? So that today can be the gateway into that glorious future. It will happen to you. And then he began to say, this day, this whole assembly will know that there's no God except in Israel. And you know the story, how David, you know, eventually was taken to Saul. And Saul put the arm on him and said, I never tried this before. And then he gave testimony. If he didn't kill the lion, there'll be no testimony to give. If he didn't kill the bear, there'll be no testimony to give. Then he gave the testimony. And then eventually he said, God be with you. And then he collected those five stones and took a sling in his hand. And then he said, this day I come unto you. Don't miss today. Don't miss today. Every day you leave. Whatever challenges you have, whatever problems you have, whatever seeming disappointments you have, and whatever precious persecution or problems you have, what a glorious day. And turn that problem into something that will help you to move forward to the place you are going. You will get there in Jesus' name. And so you know what David did then? He confronted that Goliath and that Goliath eventually was killed. What I'm telling you is what you do today, what you do today, and your attitude to the challenges you have today will lead you to what you are going to have in the future. Number one, the decision of today. The decision of this day. You know how, mat how that matters? A lot. In Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. And let's see the decision of this day. We're looking at verse 29. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today. 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 Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. You see, that's how the Levites came out before it was the firstborn in Israel. But now, all the nation had gone away from the Lord. And Moses came and said, who is on the Lord's side? And those Levites took a decision that day. And as read about the Levites all through the Old Testament, and even in Hebrews in the New Testament, you still find a special place of service. But those Levites, because of the decision of that day, do you remember the disobedience of that day for Saul? The Lord had sent him out, and then he was to destroy the Amalekites. And then he disobeyed the Lord. The disobedience of that day also blocked for him a glorious future. And look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And don't allow the day to go by and just say, it doesn't matter what I do to it, matters a lot. Matters a lot. If the decision of one day, the decision of that day can lead to a glorious future, and the disobedience of this day, one single day, can lead to the doom in the future. For Samuel chapter 15. I'm reading to you there from verse 21. Samuel said, As the Lord great delight in bond offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken in the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. You know that none of the descendants of Saul became king anymore in Israel? No, no. Because the disobedience of that day then blocked the progress for generations for him many years after. Number three, the defilement of this day. 
the defilement of this day. You know, Reuben didn't understand. Reuben, did you think about the blessing of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob? When that temptation came upon you, did you think that the defilement of this day could block you for the rest of your generations? In Genesis chapter 49, Genesis chapter 49, verse 3, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power unstable as water thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed and then defilest thou it he went up to my couch he lost the right of the firstborn because of the defilement of this day the dishonesty of this day Jacob called Esau and said, Esau, my firstborn, go and make me venison, of which I like, and bring it to me that I will be able to bless you. And the mother had that. And then the mother called Jacob and said, Jacob, hurry up. I'm going to dress you in the garment of Esau. And you're going to bring the venison. What if my father discovers and brings a curse upon me? Don't worry about that. Let the curse come upon me. Dishonesty, deception then came up. The dishonesty of this day. You know, many people, they don't count the day as important. Or what, you know, today, whatever happens, they just do. And you don't understand that what you do today will matter in the future. And if it's good, it will be the gateway. To a glorious future. If it is evil, it's going to block a glorious future for you. And eventually he came, you know the story, he appeared to get the blessing. Then after Jacob had blessed, after Isaac had blessed Jacob, Esau came. And then he said, rise up my father and eat my venison and bless me. Who are you? Who brought this just now? And then it is God, it was Jacob. And then Esau said, I'll kill him. He'll suffer for it. He will not have it, I will not have it. That's why Jacob ran away. Twenty years he was away. The dishonesty of this day, of one day. See the repercussion, the consequence of that. Look at your life now. The grace of God is available. He can forgive the past. And then you can start afresh and say, Oh Lord, here am I today. Number five, the dedication of this day. The name is Saul of Tarsus. He was traveling from Jerusalem to Damascus. All of a sudden, before he got to Damascus, there was a light from heaven. It never happened like that before. Today for Saul is a special day. I never saw any light like this before. And then there was a voice from heaven. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I never had a voice like this before. It's a new day. It's a new experience. Make use of it. He fell to the ground. Then he rose up and said, Lord Jesus, what will you have me to do? At that point, he dedicated his life unto the Lord. See the result. See the result. Just because of the dedication, the devotion of that single day, it opened for him a gateway for the future. And that's what the Lord is telling us. He's saying, now today, you have today in your hands. And as you have today in your hands, what are you going to do? Are you going to allow the day to just be wasted like that, all gone, without any benefit? Or are you going to take this day in your hand and then you are going to say today now i understand it's going to be the gateway to a glorious future what i do today where i am today what i say today what decision i take today what dedication consecration i make today can be a gateway to a glorious future in hebrews chapter 3 i'm reading to you from verse 13. hebrews chapter 3 we're looking at verse 13. Why don't we just back up to verse 7? 
Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today, if you will hear his voice, today, today, this is that day, a decision to make, a self-denial to get into, a new consecration to make, and then a new duty to carry, a new responsibility to get into. It says today, if you will hear his voice, had he not your hearts? As in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Then in verse 13, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today. Exhort one another, challenge one another, charge one another, encourage one another, counsel one another, while it is called today. Then it says, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. In verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. As in the provocation, I have heard the voice of the Lord today. Anybody heard the voice of the Lord today? Have you got something today? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, now this day will be very important. I'm not going to waste any day. I'm not going to waste any day. I'm going to stop worrying about the future, about tomorrow. And I'm going to take this day and the challenge of each day, the challenge of this day. I'm going to present it before the Lord. And my life every day is going to move me forward, move me forward, move me forward. The words I say, the prayers I pray, the things I do, and the duties I carry out, the consequences. I make the decisions I make every day. Don't allow the day to pass you by. Get something done, get something done so that today will contribute to the future. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. Now I understand. No worry, no anxiety. There is nothing to worry about. No worry, no anxiety. I'm only human, just a man. Lord, help me to believe what I could be if I put all my strength, all my energy into every day. Help me to believe what I could be and all that I am. You can be somebody. You can do something. If you will just push all the worry aside, no worry about tomorrow, no anxiety about the past. Today is what you have. And then you are telling the Lord, just show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach, teach me to take one day at a time. Lord, teach me to take one day at a time. I do not allow that day to pass without feeling it full with something. Feel it full or something one day at a time, Lord Jesus. That's what I'm asking from you. One day at a time, Lord Jesus. That's what I'm asking from you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. A lion to kill, a bear to crush. Don't let me run for the challenge of the day. Give me the strength every day to do what I have to do. The day, as the day comes, take it one at a time and do what ought to be done. Look away from non-essentials, unimportant things. What can I do today while others are playing games? What can I do today while others are roaming about? What can I do today while others are just idle? What can I do today when others are gossiping? What can I do today when other people are just sitting down, doing nothing? What can I do today that will contribute to my future? Today, yesterday is gone lord jesus and tomorrow may never be mine lord help me today show me the way one day at a time help me today oh lord show me the way to take your handle to face one day at a time the challenges of today the opportunities of this day the obstacles of the day that will strengthen your muscles, 
the problems and the pressures and the persecutions and perplexities of this day. No self-pity and no crying, but something that has come to bring a challenge unto you. What can I do with what I have in my hands today? Teach me, Lord, to take one day at a time. Show me the way. What I can, I do, what I can do with what I have in my hands today. What decision are you making today? It was the decision of one day that changed Moses completely. What can you do today? Is the decision of one day that changed Paul the apostle completely. Today. Today. Forget yesterday and forget tomorrow. And then you can go to sleep in the night like Peter slept. No anxiety about tomorrow. No anxiety about Herod, no anxiety about the Jews, no anxiety about the people of Jerusalem. Just relax, just concentrate on today, forget about yesterday and tomorrow. That's how to live a happy life, a healthy life, a holy life, a satisfactory life, a progressing life. Take one day at a time. Live tomorrow in God's hands. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. You believe in God, don't you? The God of yesterday is the God of tomorrow and the God of today. Don't you believe Jesus Christ the same? Yesterday, today and forever. What have you got to worry about? Whatever your hands find to do today, do it with all your might, all your strength, all your power, all your energy. That's all you need to do. Then tomorrow will take care of the things of itself. Labor today with God's guidance and with great faith. As we have studied all these various studies on worry and anxiety, make up your mind, it's going to transform you. It's going to change you. That you're not going to worry about anything anymore. There must be a difference in your life after all these series of studies. A change. A transformation. Now you're cool-headed. Now you have peace in your soul. Now you have rest in your mind. Now you don't have high blood pressure anymore. Now there is no fear. There is no panic. You are not worried about anything. You leave everything in the hands of God. Then you are going to live a happy life, a fulfilled life, a joyful life. You will be strong. No fear, no anxiety, no worry, no panic. No unbelief. You believe in the Lord. And then every opportunity you have every day. Make use of it. Every difficulty that comes every day, that's a great challenge, a great mountain to climb. Make use of it. 